Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV, it's the match preview time. I'm Steve Hall, delighted to be joined by Andy Bell and by Ricky Haywood Williams as well to have a better chat than the one Ricky had this morning. <laughs> we look back at the Atlanta game with Dan in this show, we're obviously going to look ahead to Liverpool versus Crystal Palace on Sunday afternoon. The Reds getting a chance to get back on the horse after falling off it rather spectacularly yesterday. Guys, thanks very much for, for coming in, Andy. Enjoying the last couple of days of a, of your of your Easter holiday before you're back to the grind as well, man. Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, yeah, I could I could have done without that. To be completely honest, you, you sort of get to sort of Thursday, Friday of the, the second week, and you're starting to get a bit nervous about going back to work. Sort of starting to think about doing a bit of work, and that was because uh, sort of a bit of an escape. But it was anything but an escape last night. Yeah, Ricky, we plan to have you in for a long time. It's been it's been a few weeks coming, and you didn't pick the best game to review. I literally picked the worst time to come and see you guys. I, I almost cancelled. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, they're not gonna want me here after that game. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need your we need your positivity. I've watched your shows and listened to your stuff. You're, you bring new positivity. I'm hoping for that. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping to get some more of that after today. <laughs> um, let's let's make a start then, Rick. Of course, I'll come to you first. Like the everyone always complains sometimes about the the Thursday Sunday grind of Europa League Sunday Europa yeah. League Sunday yeah. I actually think maybe it's a positive now that we're playing so quickly because the last thing yeah. you want is to dwell on what was probably the worst performance of the season one of the worst home performances I can remember for, under Jurgen Klopp really yeah. the, the fact that it, that Palace is coming around so quickly maybe gives everyone a chance to maybe just get out of the system straight away yeah I think you're right man um, literally by half time I think we all knew that this was the worst <laughs> the worst we've seen Liverpool play for a very very long time and it, it didn't get much better did it um, but yeah you're right definitely get back on the horse straight away try and get a good result um, it would be worse I think if we had to wait a bit longer yeah. So I think the fact that it is on Sunday and it is against Palace, I think the last I think the last five games, I think three games, two draws. So, you know, they're not doing too well at the moment either. So hopefully we can capitalise on that. As well, Sands, we, we'll, we'll speak about Palace more in depth in a little bit. In fact, let's just do it now. Since the new manager taken, took over, they've had that one win. He, he took over, technically it wasn't for the Everton game. He was in the stands for the mm. Everton game, which he drew. They beat Burnley, but then they lost that Spurs. He drew with Luton, he drew with Forest. He lost to Bournemouth, obviously, last weekend to give Man City a little bit of a scare, but then ultimately, I mean, they deserve to lose. They got beat 4-2. Uh, it does feel like, you know, if they were expecting like a new manager bounce, they haven't really got one yet. But like I say, for them, they're probably looking at Liverpool going, now is a great time to go and play them and maybe do upset the apple cart. Yeah, totally. He's not had a very nice time of it. You're right. He's only won one game. That was against Burnley at home. Um, draws against the likes of Luton at home and Sheffield United as well. You know, games that really Crystal Palace fans will, will expect to be winning. And it's a bit of a transition period for them as well. You know, this this guy that's come in, I, what, the first time I actually watched him, watched his style of play was on was on Saturday there against Man City. And, and they actually impressed me quite a yeah. bit. It wasn't that how I, I'd expect a, a, a bottom half team to play against City. You know, they did concede a lot of chances and sort of progressive teams who try to play a bit of football against Man City will concede a lot of chances. But there was a plan to carry a threat as well. And that's what so often you don't see against Man City. Teams are just sort of happy to take their 2 or 3 nil defeat so I was quite impressed with how they played and you know this guy Glasner as, as much as he hasn't had a very nice time of it so far he's not sort of some gammon who's come up from the championship he's actually got a bit about him he's a uh, he's got he's a league winner yeah, he, yeah. He's, he's got European experience he's he's tactically very astute and he relished coming to Anfield and you know it'll take him time to sort of work out how to beat these low blocks at home and get Palace the points they should be getting but in terms of this one he'd be relishing this and you know we, we need to be on our game because we've got some good players Palace as well I was going to say that Ricky like if you are if, if anyone at the moment and again I'm not trying to be too negative but if you're playing against Liverpool at the moment you're probably thinking we're probably going to get a couple of chances yeah. uh, you know even you know we, we let Man United in Man United rubbish they've, they've scored like six yeah. goals against Liverpool in two games I and, don't, don't, you know, don't. I know but you saw yesterday <laughs> that kind of stuff yeah. in the likes of Mateta and Elisa who's just come back obviously Eze is yeah. still around as well they have got players who, you know if Liverpool aren't on it like Liverpool haven't definitely went last night even against Brighton a little bit as well at times even against Sheffield United at times Palace do have the players who, who can punish you, so it's you know we talk about the reaction, but it's 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 been quite a theme recently. You know, attacking players having a little bit of joy against us. Yeah, it feels like I, I do think we're going to win, but it does feel like a potential banana skin kind of kind of fixture. Um, obviously, we play a high line. Palace are going to be wanting to play you know a low block and then trying to hit us on the counter attack, yeah. and they did that really well against Man City in the first half of that game. Um, they ran out of legs a little bit, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They did. I think they ran out of legs. Um, and just kind of yeah, they lost they lost their way a little bit, and then they 
the, the quality of Man City just came through and they got punished like severely. But if they can if they can get a, a goal like early on against us, it could be a very very tricky game. It could get like nervy. You know, the crowd might you know get a bit nervous as well because I think we put so much on these last few games with it being Klopp's like that swan song and that and whatnot. I just feel like if it doesn't go our way early on, if we don't, if we're not clinical in those first few like twenty five minutes or so, I think it, it could be a tough game. I felt Andy, I did watch the Palace game. I'm sorry, the, the City game a little bit of it as well. Mm. Obviously, they get the early goal, and to be fair, like they actually defend quite well. They, they yeah. defend quite stubbornly with that. They have like that three man uh, defence, and obviously the, the full backs tucking in as well. City, it, it, you know, it took a worldie really from from Kevin yeah. De Bruyne to get them back into, it. and then a really good another well work goal for Rico Lewis just after just after half time. They did look like a team who, if you give them something to hold on to, then they they have got that that the dog in them, the fight in them to, yeah. to hold on to it. And like I say, look what Brighton did score early. We saw yesterday mm-hmm. um, Atalanta could have scored even earlier than they did. It's been a theme again for Liverpool really conceding that early goal. Is there anything the manager can do to change that? Because if, if they just feel like Liverpool have not been great starters, and listen, L- Ricky's right, Liverpool should be Crystal Palace, but they are a team who you don't really want to give something to hold on yeah. to because they've shown that they are capable maybe of, of defending quite well. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's necessarily any sort of um, personnel changes you can make to to, to, to to guard against that. You know, ultimately, you're picking you're picking the two centre-halves and then you're picking two full-backs. If one of them's Gomez, you're going a little bit more defensive. But Gomez has started in many of these games where we've conceded early and it hasn't really made a difference. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'd personally go for two attacking full-backs and we'll, we'll maybe get on to that later in the show. Um, in terms of, like, some teams will come to Anfield and they'll, they'll just defend for their lives and they'll hope to get a set piece and they'll hope to sort of nick something on the break and, and that's fine. But Palace, I think they'll come with a real plan to... Um, they do decide to, to play a bit. They, they certainly do. And what yeah. struck me about the game against City as well was the amount of times that they picked the ball off Rodri. And I think Rodri's probably the best <laughs> midfielder in the world, you know? So if they if he's targeted him in a way that they could they could create chances and did create chances, then he's going to have a plan. And whether that's the same uh, plan as when they come to Anfield, I don't know. But I think who plays in that number six is going to be very important. And and I'd, I'd personally give Endo a bit of a break so I think he looks tired at the minute I do I'd maybe, well. uh, yeah, I'd maybe yeah. throw McAllister in there for this one based on what I've seen from them um, but no it's uh, it's it's one of those where we don't want to go it, it, it felt like they were happy to sort of create five chances and give City ten chances and take their chances yeah. against that and that's very similar to how United played against us you know they were happy to give us chances on the break and, uh, and banking that we wouldn't be clinical enough and since since around probably Bournemouth away at the start of, at the end of January we, we haven't been clinical enough and teams mm-hmm. have been right to take that approach so it is a concern and the players coming back are going to need to give us that sharpness and that clinic, uh, clinicalness if that's a word in the final third if we're if we're going to if we're going to get these wins that we're going to need to challenge from the league obviously at this time of the year Rick, we, we, we have a reference point to the last time we played these teams obviously it was a different manager when yeah. Liverpool went to Palace but listen it took an injury time winner from Harvey a very good goal from Harvey earlier yeah. and also Maybe a little bit of a debatable red card for Palace. You know, I mean, they weren't they weren't too happy. Liverpool, they went down to ten and then Liverpool equalised yeah. pretty much straight away. They obviously again they, got, they went one 0 up in that game. They got the penalty on on, on Quanta. That's like seven minutes for VAR to give. <laughs> but I don't know. Given and I think we've all kind of half joked a little bit of gallows humour around the mood at the moment. Dave says he wants to comment. It's actually critical we score first because if we go behind again, it could drain the energy. It does feel like there's a lot of teetering with this Liverpool side like well listen Liverpool are in the mix they've won a trophy they're second in the Premier League on goal difference they're still in Europe albeit clinging on to that one but it does feel like there's a an unease around the place and if Liverpool do yeah. concede first like they did against Palace last time I do wonder if what the reaction would be like from the fan base and from the players as well because for the first time yesterday they actually didn't get one usually when they've yeah. conceded the first they, they have come back and they've responded but yesterday was the first time they haven't it does feel like this is one of those games where you don't want to be doing that again yeah I agree I think if you look at the two Man United games the one in the FA Cup and then the one in the league recently we absolutely battered them but we were just so wasteful weren't mm-hmm. clinical um uh, there was a, I think there was a, a moment where Sabozla went through in the in the uh, in the Man United game quite early on and just didn't bury it. And I mm. felt like, you know, if that was years gone by, if that was a, a Mane or if that was a Salah in his peak, that's a goal. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it just adds that bit of pressure, just knowing that we're not quite there in terms of finishing at the moment, not to the level that we were once were like a couple of years ago maybe. So that just adds a bit of pressure. So if we do go a goal behind, it does feel like a bit more of a mountain to climb. And as we know, Palace, you know, they're they can set up really really well so it would be a tricky game so we I, I don't think it's imperative that we score first because we know that we can come from behind but I think if we do 
I think we win the game. I, I really do think we win the game. Yeah, it does feel like that way. Like, I can't sit here and say like, like, Liverpool have to score first because they've conceded the first goal like 20 times and yeah. they've won more often than not. But it, I don't know. And it just does feel like, and I might be wrong, I don't know if there's a lack of confidence in the players or whatever yeah. it is, but it, 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 it does feel a little bit different yeah. where things do feel a little bit fragile. Would you agree with that? I, I do. And I think just more than anything else, you know, Ricky's right. If we go a goal behind, we, we can pull it back and we, we, we possibly would be odds on to pull it back at home to, to Palace. But you look at our last six fixtures now, you know, after this one, on paper, it gets it gets pretty tricky for the next mm. five, and then you've got Wolves at home. And if we're going to win the league, we're not going to sort of win it four 0 against Wolves at home. They'll find a way mm -hmm. of making it as, yeah. as uncomfortable as possible for us. So after this, we've got Fulham away. I'm not sure about the order of these: Fulham away, West Ham away, you missed Everton, Everton, in Everton, Everton's in the middle of that. Then Spurs home, then Villa away. There are five really tricky games. Four of them are away from home, and on paper, this is the one that could be comfortable if we can get a couple of goals ahead. But that's based on nothing we've seen in uh, in recent form <laughs> from Liverpool you know yeah. that that's just based on me thinking Liverpool are playing Palace at home so it would be nice I think because the players the players put so much into this season I think mentally and physically some of the ones who during all those injuries have had to play so much and have to really carry the boats mm -hmm. that a lot of them are looking quite tired at the minute that we could just do having this one wrapped up by 60 minutes but I did sit here before Sheffield United and, and give it loads of chat about goal difference as well and <laughs> so I'm, I'm not going to fall into the same trap yeah, I, I don't think we're good enough at the moment no. in, in form wise to, to even start thinking that way let's have a little look then at how we think Liverpool could line up. It, it appears Rick that uh, Allison's not quite ready yet. He hasn't. He hasn't even gone back to properly full training yet. He's he's closer than obviously he was a couple of weeks ago, but he's not the, quite there yet. So we're going to get. It's going to be Keller hitting goal again. It, mm -hmm. it, it was interesting last night with Kiev because I know you spoke about today a little bit, but like he saves the ones maybe that were difficult, and he lets in a couple yeah. that maybe he should have saved. He's actually one of the things that has been most impressive about Keller has probably been his demeanor and how cool and calm he is, mm -hmm. but also it. it how do you think he will react to last night? Because, like I say, he makes an incredible save after four minutes with his head, yeah. but then he lets one through his hands. That, like, you know, I, I'd have been half comfortable saving that one. <laughs> It'll be, a, it, look, it, but it will be interesting to see how he responds because he's he's yeah. going to play Sunday. He's probably going to have to play Thursday, and then we'll see how things go for Fulham. But it'll be interesting to see how he responds do you back him to just put that to one side and go again because he is a, he is a relatively yeah. young lad yeah he is a relatively young goalkeeper but I, I feel like working alongside Alisson is giving him the tools to you know have the right mentality being the number two at Liverpool but then being able to come in and play so well and he has played so well over the, over the course of the season um, I just feel that he's just a level or two below what Alisson is so you're going to get those moments where you know we expect Alisson to make that save where Key maybe won't won't pull it off it's just a fact because he's not quite at the level of Allison. so that just comes down to our defense has got to be better um yeah so Verge has got a big job to make sure that you know those those shots or those chances aren't going to get through get through to him no yeah absolutely and hopefully he responds well let's talk defenders and it was interesting Andy because after the game Jürgen hasn't done a proper press conference this game by the way he kind of spoke after that Atlanta for like two minutes and was like he basically said the only reason Trent Alexander Lyle was on the bench is because we had 12 spaces um, but he was never, ever, ever going to play, which makes you think he's unlikely to play at, maybe yeah. on the bench and maybe some minutes on, on Sunday. But if he had no chance on Thursday, that feels unlikely that he can start. So then the manager's got, he can, he can go with Gomez again or he can go with Connor Bradley at right back. And mm -hmm. the sense I've got is that it probably should be Bradley. Yeah, I think as brilliant as Gomez has been filling in this season I think last night was his worst game of the season uh, in a Liverpool mm -hmm. shirt I think he was was really really poor I think nothing came off for him and I've never been as angry at a player as when Jota came on and crowd get a bit of a lift wins a free kick everyone's up for it again everyone's singing it looks like we could get one back and it falls to Gomez on the edge of the box and some Muppets shout shoot and he, he shoots and <laughs> all the pressure's off all of a sudden um, interestingly enough I was having a chat with people you know that the, the shoot shout for Gomez like it's it, obviously everyone seems to hate it but like I don't know about you it never seems to be like anyone around me it's always like dotted around I've, 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 I can never take anyone to task on it's never the person sitting next to me you know what I mean so I think the fact that we we had one sub remaining um, going into the the dying embers of the game, I can't I can't remember who he, he brings or it's Diaz, Diaz he brings on, but I thought the game was crying out for a, a Bradley for for Gomez substitution yeah. just to give us a little bit more going forward in the fullback areas and obviously Simicas had a stinker as well and Robertson came on and made a bit of a difference. So mm -hmm. I think for this one I'd go um, I, I'd go I'd go Bradley and Robertson as the fullbacks and obviously Virgil and you would think Kanate, but I thought Kanate struggled a little bit last mm -hmm. night as well with the physicality of Skamaka um, and Matera is a very physical striker as well. 
So, you know, at the weekend, just past there, obviously he goes for, for Kwanzaa at Old Trafford and who knows what the sort of hierarchy is there in Klopp's head as well. So wouldn't be shocked to see Kwanzaa play. But uh, yeah, if it was me, I'd be going Bradley, Virgil, Kanate and uh, Robertson for this one. It, it, the Kanate thing's interesting. So I, I think we all agree Bradley and Robertson should play and Virgil yeah. will play. Rick, yeah. But... The, 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 I, I suggest that I've found the Canate Quanta thing. Like I feel like the manager got the wrong way around. Like I thought Quanta should have been playing the Thursdays, and then maybe yeah. Canate should have been playing the weekends. So one of our comments has mentioned maybe it's something to do with the fact that with Ramadan, maybe they wanted to be playing the night games, and yeah. right. obviously that's finished now. I don't, I don't again. That's just hypothetical. But the manager's been really careful to look after Canate. He hasn't been wanting yeah. to play two games a week, but it does feel like Liverpool need to get their best eleven on the pitch at some point. If you're looking for a response. You probably want Ibu start, and again, I think Quan has been great. He obviously has the mistake at United, but yeah. for the most part, but it does feel like he probably the manager probably needs to flip this now and get Canate back playing the yeah. weekends. Yeah, I think you know Jarrell Quanza. If at the start of the season we never knew that he was going to have the season that he's had, he's done absolutely like phenomenal, yes. phenomenal performances over the course of the season so far, but. He's still a young player and young players are going to make mistakes and they're going to need time to, that's just the nature of being a young player. They're going to need time to kind of like, you know, <laughs> lick their wounds as it were. I'd put Ibu in all day. I think, I think just the, we're in the running now. It's, 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 it's the, it's crunch time. It's the, the business end of the season and put your best 11 in, put your best back four in, put your best players in. And um, you, you're definitely right. Ibu did struggle um, against Atalanta. Wasn't the only one. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they all struggled, didn't yeah. they? I just think it was just a tonal thing like from the start. They just, we just didn't get started, so. Interesting before, you mentioned what midfield, then moving into midfield, about Endo, looked, he did look a little bit leggy. Mm -hmm. um, I actually don't think McAllister, again, McAllister looked no. a little bit the same. It'd be interesting because I thought, going back to that City Palace game, it was Wharton and Will Hughes in the middle. Mm -hmm. And they actually, and, and Andy's right, they actually give City a little bit of a tot of time. They were trying to take the ball off Rodri. Yeah. It was the most uncomfortable I've seen Rodri look for actually quite a while. In the end, he, mm -hmm. he's class and it, and it prevails, of course. But it will be interesting to see what the manager does in the field. Does he want mm -hmm. that, that the energy of Endo? Or does he want more ball players, in which case he plays McAllister 6? What would you be doing? I, I, I hear what you're saying about Endo. I think he's struggled over the last couple of games. However, when he's not in, I just feel like it doesn't work as well. I think I think the fact that Endo's in there and he can just sit and just break play up and just get the turnovers, he does it really, really well. So as long as as long as they'll be in a better position to assess if he's if he's up to it, I'd always have him in there. Yeah, just, I, think I, yeah. I think I agree. Yeah. I think I yeah. know you said McAllister, Andy. What was you thinking on that one? Yeah, I, I would give Endo just a bit of a break. I just think he's looking really leggy at the moment yeah, and the way that that Palace. Um, targeted him I think mm -hmm. concern me a little bit don't get me wrong if there was a you know if it's the last day of the season tomorrow and we need to pick our best team and have Endo in there yeah. I, I just think right now and like at different parts throughout the season you know different players have come in and, and provided a bit of energy when they've needed to you know this season don't get me wrong Nunez has been much better than Gakpo but right now Gakpo's looking much fresher <laughs> much sharper and I'd actually you know consider starting Gakpo this weekend as well and we'll come on to talk about the forwards you know it's not that I, I don't think Endo's in our best 11 it's just right now I think maybe give him a bit of a break especially mm -hmm. the way they targeted Rodri um, the thing with McAllister as well is, you know, initially when he started playing in the six, because he had to play in the six, he uh, he took a while to get going and then was world class. And then we moved him to the eight and he took a while to get going and was world class. So hope that <coughs> pushing him back into the yeah. six doesn't sort yeah. of take him a while to get going again. But hopefully he can just slot in there and, and seamlessly do what he does. But I think there's a conversation around Sobosla as well at the moment. Well, that's the next one because McAllister's yeah. playing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, say it is Endo McAllister. The, the, the question that becomes, I'll stick with you, Andy, is who's the third? Yeah. I don't think Kurt's had a particularly great game. Sobers has been a little bit up and down, to say the least. I thought Harvey Elliott was unlucky to get moved out. He always seems to be one who shifted out of mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at those three, the form, I, I can include, of course, um, Ryan Gravenberch as well in this conversation. Um, it feels like Elliott's probably the most in the best form of those three at the moment. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's time to give Harvey a start in the field. I I think it is actually. I I would go for this one. I would go uh, McAllister Jones and Elliot. I play okay. Jones on the left. Now, do you think Jones is, you know, uh, not like him this um not like him previously when he was at his best this season, but he's been getting caught in the ball quite a bit when he's been coming on a little bit slow on it. I think that's just a case of getting up to speed. But I think he's had three substitute appearances now, so I think he's ready to come in and and nail that spot again. Um, and absolutely Harvey Elliot. Um. I just think we need to do something different there, change it up. You know, we're in a bit of a rut at the moment and we need, they need to rock it to sort of change things and bring a bit more positivity and whether that's changing the midfielders or even going sort of 4-2-4 four, four and throwing Gakpo mm. into a kind of quasi-midfield attacking position. I'm not sure, but he needs to do something different, I think. What do you think, Rick? I, I'm, I'm banging to be... I think Elliot should play. Yeah. I think he's the most informed. I think, against the busy Palace midfield. Yeah. We saw the impact he made coming on against Palace and that's always the, the thing with Harvey, isn't it? Because he's so good as a sub. 
You're yeah. half tempted to keep him as a sub because yeah. he comes on and impacts yeah. games where we've seen other players who come off the bench and it, it, it finds it difficult. It's a real good skill to have of being able to impact the game off the bench, but it also goes against you because the yeah. manager keeps putting you on the bench. But I actually think Jones is still coming back from injury. He started. Is he ready to start two games in, th- in four days? Yeah. I don't know. We mentioned Sabah's life form has been great. We haven't seen much of Gravenberg. And he probably wasn't that great the last time we saw him either. <laughs> uh, what would you be doing? Unfortunately, I, I mean, I was a massive, massive advocate to get Graven Burks um, back in the summer. I, I, I thought he'd be a great buy, and he still might be a young player. Yeah. Still needs to come up to speed. He's more yeah. of a project. I and he's had it. a bad injury. He had an injury as well. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, but I, I just feel like at the moment, I probably wouldn't start. I probably wouldn't start him in this game. I might bring him on. I think I'd definitely start uh, McAllister. Um, I know, I know, I, I, I do agree with Andy. I do think um, Endo does look a bit leggy, looks a bit leggy against uh, Man United. Yeah, yeah but, I, but I just think his combativeness, yeah. even if you take him off after 60 minutes, I'd, I'd, I'd still put him in. And Sobo, he's having a bit of a stinker at the minute, isn't he? Especially after that, that terrible, horrible pass that he did <laughs> last night. I it felt- was worse than the pass. <laughs> that when the guy taps it in and he doesn't try and stop him. Yeah. Oh my God. That was, like- that was, that was, that, I, I can forgive a pass that I was the represent. Steve, for a, sec- <laughs> for a second, I thought he was injured. Yeah. I, thought, I, thought maybe, I thought maybe he pulled something, but he hadn't. He just like, just yeah. didn't get back. I was like, what are you doing? This is your fault. However, um, if he can show, I think play him into form. I think he can't, he can't, continue surely to, to go again with him yeah I'd, I'd give him another shot I'd give him another shot and then maybe bring Harvey on for him like like maybe 70 minutes or I, so. I, 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 I'm, I'm banging to Harvey starting I think mm. he's the, I, I, in good form he I, thought, I thought he was good yesterday I thought it was, yeah. I think it's, he just isn't a right winger he's yeah, so yeah, left footed yeah. and he's yeah. got no pace yeah. like, it, it, it doesn't suit but I think I would go him I love Harvey I really yeah, do absolutely Let's talk up front then. Salah and Diaz are going to play. I mean, there's no. Mm-hmm. I don't think. I don't think Mo's in the greatest form again yesterday. But the fact they didn't start yesterday, they, I mean, there's not. It isn't even a conversation. He's going to play. Yeah. And I think we all probably would go with it, even though we agree he isn't. Um, Andy brought up there about centre forward Ricky um, Nunes. He's got gap up. I don't. We don't quite know where Diogo Jota's at. Yeah. He played twenty minutes, didn't he? And he actually, quite. He looked quite sharp. Mm, yeah. I don't know what he's got in his legs as well. Um, yeah, it is, it's a difficult one really because. What would you be doing centre forward? <sighs> centre forward. So see the Gakpo. No. Gakpo Nunes probably. Gakpo I don't think Nunes, unless Jota's yeah. fit enough to come. Jota will probably be on the bench again, won't yeah. he? Probably probably come on maybe yeah. last twenty minutes or so. I'd probably I think I'd still go Nunes. I know that he hasn't been great in terms of in front of goal recently, but he's still been getting chances. He's still been looking lively. And I think a lot of it is to do with the relationship between him and Salah at the moment. I think before Salah went away and before he was injured, they had a really good kind of synergy. Um, And I think Nunes was always looking for Salah, whereas I think he kind of became the main man for a little bit, didn't he, when Salah was away? And I think now Salah's come back. He's like, I want to get back in the goals again. I want to kind of like get my stats up. I want to get these goals and try and push us through. And he's not really looking for Nunes, where Nunes is kind of in like in good positions a lot of the time. And I think they need to work on that. I think if we're gonna we're gonna you know do well this season, I think those two need to click again. So I'd put them to him. And why would you go Gakpo? Just form. I, I, I don't. I don't know if I necessarily would go Gakpo. I think if I was going Gakpo, I'd go in the midfield. Okay. Um, or play like sort of a four-two-four. I know that hasn't really worked this season, but I think mm. that's because Gakpo at the start of the season just wasn't firing, and he, he looks a bit sharper now. So yeah. that so that could work. Um, I I would just about go Nunez through the middle from the start. I think variety of different factors just first he probably Jada can't do any more than you would say 45 minutes so I think he's probably a substitute for this game and you don't want to rush Jada back as well because we've got those five really tough games in the league coming yeah. up and you want Jada for those um I think Crystal Palace play quite a high line most sort of progressive teams do as well so you know you want Nunez's pace in behind mm-hmm. he's always an option on the shoulder and um, to just run into that all said I, I do think because Nunez played so much football he's looking a bit leggy at the moment mm-hmm. and this and there's no doubt about it people have uh, have their opinions on Nunez but his, his greatest asset is his physicality and his running and his strength you yeah. know his, his technical abilities leaves a lot to be desired sometimes for me so you know if you're taking a little bit away from the physicality and the and the pace then you know you're left with a, a much worse sort of version of, of Darwin Nunez um, if, I could, if I could guarantee you an hour of Jota would you if, if the fitness staff comes to you and you can do an hour would you start yeah. him or would you bring him off the yeah, bench? Yeah, absolutely start him up front. Yeah, absolutely start him up front. Yeah, over Nunez. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, agree I agree with that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I'm hoping that's the case as well. I, again, I, I, 
listen here, we're not sports scientists, but the general rule of thumb is usually 20 minutes to appearance, half an hour to yeah. appearance, first yeah. start. Like, that's how the, the general thing yeah, goes, yeah. but we don't know how fit he is. But yeah. I agree. I think given how important it is that Liverpool get goals and get goals you know, quickly, if, if the fitness staff said that you, you can have them for an hour, that, that pre-planned 60 minutes sub that Liverpool do anyway, I think it must be it must be half tempted, Ricky, because Liverpool have missed someone in front of goal who was that that killer. I know Jota had a chance yesterday, but actually I thought it was quite difficult in the end. He was leaning yeah. back, but he still looked like the most likely. If the ball's in the box, he's going to score a goal. He clearly wasn't. You know, he needed he needs time to get up yeah. to speed. But he came on and he was making stuff happen mm-hmm. all, like straight away. He yeah. got on the end of two crosses. You know, granted they didn't go very well, but he uh, he nearly got us a penalty. So yeah, I think if we can get an hour out of him from the start and get some a couple of early goals. That that'd be absolutely like priceless. It would be. It really would be. It's it's one thing, it because I was just thinking, Andy, I'll come come back to you on on the Lewis Diaz thing as well. It actually feels like of all the four players, he might be among the best form. Like mm. it, it may be like, at different stages of the seasons. Ricky, like, do, you, do you heavily relied on Mo Salah for a while? Yep. Salah goes away, and actually Gapo and Nunes, and then Nunes gets injured, and then Diaz and Gapo, and then. But it feels like now of the five of them, given that if there's been injuries up and down form, it feels like Diaz is probably the one who's in the best nick of all of them and I wonder if, is he able to carry the team for one or two more just until everyone's back up to fitness because mm. he, he might need to because everyone is everyone else has got like up and down haven't played much been injured just coming back from injury all that kind of stuff do you think Lewis Diaz has got the capability to go right down this is the Lewis Diaz game because if he does Liverpool will win and he, and he never hides Diaz in a period of bad form he's always going to get in the ball and try and make things happen and he's he's an absolute menace my only sort of issue that the, the makeup of the front three at the moment is you know we for years we had Salamani Firmino and Salamani had a ridiculous output of goals and Firmino did little bits around it but was never like the most clinical striker in the world whereas right now if it's Salah who's usually clinical but right now he's in a bad vein of form and Diaz and Nunez who just aren't killers for me you know they're they're mm-hmm. great at, at certain things in all around play you know Diaz does so many things right but just doesn't quite get in the areas and quite get enough goals although his output recently has been a little bit better and uh, and Nunez we all know Nunez isn't clinical so you know right now we're relying on Salah for these goals mm-hmm. um is Salah on form the you know alone as a as the only killer in the side enough to win us the league who knows but there's one thing for certain Jota's all around game can sometimes leave a lot to be desired yeah but he is a killer and he will take the chances. And, you know, against Manchester United, if you could have given me, I don't know, like Filippo and Zaghi, because uh, I heard a story <laughs> once that in, like, the Milan players, like in Rondos, they used to like literally laugh at how bad <laughs> Filippo and Zaghi was at football, but he was he was just deadly in front of goal. And that's just Tell exactly Alan, what we did. Ricky, you call him a League Two player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't mind him. I wouldn't yeah. mind him a couple of League Two players. <laughs> but we, we just need a killer in front of goal and nothing else right now because we've, we've enough good all around playing that team to create chances. That's the thing, Rick. That's going back to the Diaz thing, I, I actually think he is in the best form. Mm. It's just whether his best. Like, it looks like Liverpool are low on confidence, and all those from everyone's having a little bit of a wobble up and down a bit. It feels like when you're the man in form, it's almost you know, right. Like, okay, it's my responsibility to get us through this. Yeah. It feels like it feels like there's a lot on Louis Diaz's shoulders. I think he's actually handled it quite well. But it might just yeah. be one more time. Can he go one more time and go right? I understand. It isn't the best couple of days for us. I wasn't involved. I'm not taking the blame. Here we go. I'm going to come back and take over again. Because if he does, like I say, it gives Liverpool a really good chance. Yeah, I mean, uh, like Andy says, he, he never hides. Um, his all-round play is in his position is great. It's just the output on goals. And, you know, like when he came in, he was clearly the replacement for Sadio Mane. And you're trying to replace, what, what 15 goals a season, pretty much. Mm. Um, and Diaz just doesn't really get there. Um but yeah, everything else that he does is is phenomenal. And like Andy said as well, he has recently been, you know, chipping in with some goals and stuff. So hopefully he can carry on doing that because we need him. But massively need him. Absolutely. We're getting your score potential for the game in a moment. There's our team. And before we do, just have a little look, obviously, at the league table and what else is going on. As we all know, going into the weekend, Arsenal are top 71 points, but their goal difference is 70... Uh, sorry, it is 51. Liverpool, 71 points as well. Our goal difference is plus 42. So there's a big nine-goal swing between the two there. And then, obviously, City, 31 point eight games played, 70 points. Their goal difference is, is plus 40. Just worth that in mind. Um, we always look, Andy, at this stage of the season, of course, of the fixtures for the teams. Now, Manchester City are playing Luton at home. I don't think anyone's holding out hope for Luton to do anything. Who knows? You, you never know. Um, we've got John behind the camera, Everton, who's desperate for City to beat them 12 0. But, like, I, I, as plucky as Luton have been, this isn't the game where City. It, it feels like this one's where it's like, just don't batter them. Like, well, look, this is more of a don't 
smash your goal difference rather because it, it's very unlikely Luton can get anything at, at the Etihad yeah, Luton are really impressive they're actually, plucky in, they in, are, in, but, in, in everything yeah. I've seen you know they, they go to Arsenal the other week and I remember sitting here talking about it and saying Luton have no chance and they, ultimately they, they are quite comprehensively beaten in the end but I think they're missing a ridiculous number of players, players you know and they're not exactly well stocked in terms of resources to begin with so to put in these performances I think their manager is really 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 impressive and I don't mm-hmm. think he'll be at Luton long um, even next season if they go down to the championship I think he'll be hot on the heels of a lot of uh, of Premier League clubs or even European clubs um, all that said I don't expect them to do anything um, yeah with Arsenal with a goal difference there nine ahead we're not pulling that back. We need Arsenal to drop points. Mm-hmm. Villa at home, it is possible. They're they're playing well recently, but um, I think you know in terms of their their form, they're they're in a really really good moment. I don't think that's going to last the whole season. So hopefully, that draw in midweek will have knocked them a bit, bit of energy expended into that, and uh, and Villa can can come back and do something with Watkins, which they didn't have against City. Yeah. I suppose. Well, the only the only caveat here, I suppose, Ricky, is both these teams, and we also hold Arsenal second have had. Champions League commitments both went through grueling games yeah. and they both got another one coming up early, late, earlier in the week as well that obviously Arsenal going to uh, to, to and they're both Munich. in the balance as well yeah, that's what yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so they, they, they go they go there on Wednesday so obviously um, Arsenal play Sunday Wednesday Manchester City I mean they're at home against Real Madrid of course on Wednesday afternoon as well but again tie in the balance that's the only thing did he, did he do what Liverpool did maybe yesterday and just rest one too many players or mm. there's just one too many lads out of form Arsenal should beat Aston Villa but it's at home against the fifth place sides mm. who are still you know Villa are banging this um, top four race if they need to because fifth might not get Champions League now yep. obviously I know you know a couple of Arsenal fans yourself down there <laughs> uh, is, is the is there any hope of Villa doing anything for you against Arsenal? I think so. I think so. I think with Ollie Watkins back, I think I think Villa have been really good this season. Yeah. And I think on their day, they can give anyone a really good game. Um, I just think Arsenal are just so good defensively at the minute. Yeah. That's just, they remind me of when we won the league. Yeah. Like just they rarely give anything away and they can mix it up they can if you want to have a fight they can have a fight with you if, if you want to pass it they can pass you out the game if they can go direct they've kind of got all bases covered so I can't really see how uh, anyone's going to outscore them because they're so good defensively um, but you know Ollie Watkins having the season of his life if anyone can Villa should be able to do it I suppose well hopefully Andy if all goes well oh, like Liverpool should be Crystal Palace at home you'd expect Manchester City to be looting at home like Arsenal could go into that game in third place and then obviously they've shown all season this old tag of flaky Arsenal you can write that it's gone yep. they're anything but but there is something to do with you know if they do drop points and all of a sudden they stay third in the league there's, this is the psychology of title races like the benefit of going first that Manchester City have got is if you win it's great and Liverpool felt this a few weeks ago, didn't they? They got to play Brighton and beat them and then watch those two fight against each other. This time Arsenal get the challenge of going last and they've probably got the most difficult game of the three teams as well. So that's maybe psychologically something to think about as well. They've just been at a gruelling game against Bayern. They've got another one. And it, it, you know, on paper, Liverpool and City are going to go, should leapfrog them. It'd be interesting to see how Arteta and Arsenal respond to that. A scoreboard pressure is a big thing. And I think yep. compared to, it's very similar to the situation we were in last week where I sat down on Saturday on my sofa to watch Palace City, thinking that's a tricky game, to watch Brighton Arsenal, thinking that's a tricky game. And I was actually quite confident that one or both of them would drop points. And both ended up being quite comprehensive and just, you know, Sweep, sweeping them away and, and getting the job done and I felt a bit sort of despondent going to bed on Saturday night thinking maybe we have to go to Old Trafford and win we've not got a great record oh, there nice. so they'll be in the same situation except obviously in, the, in this instance they won't actually expect us to drop points they'll expect both of us to win so they'll expect to be third going into that um, whereas whether our players took much notice of what happened on the Saturday um, they're probably sort of professional unlike me who sort of puts everything into every every game emotionally so yeah it, it, it will be a big one for them you know they're getting closer and closer to it um you know they 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 i don't want to use the word bottle it because i think it's overused but they they certainly throw it away towards the end of last season in games where they shouldn't um and they'll be they'll be keen to avoid that again but yeah they've, they've got some tricky enough fixtures coming up they still go to spurs and they still to go to united uh this is probably the third trickiest of their six to go so yeah let's see what they're made of i suppose as well the, the, if i'm looking at glass half empty point unfortunately ricky is that villa did play last night they had the grueling game themselves yeah. they've got they've got their own european quarter final on the horizon as well so they're going through the thursday uh sunday mm. thing where arsenal played Tuesday, you know, it, it is it, you know two two yeah. game two day difference and Arsenal be our home. Like you would want this the other way around, really. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Villa Villa beat Arsenal at home earlier this season. Yeah. Um, 
probably I'd, I thought Villa did okay, but Arsenal were decent, just couldn't finish the dinner. Yeah. That's the only difference here. If, if, if Villa hadn't had that midweek game, I think I'd be mm. a little bit more confident. But that that's again that that Thursday Sunday grind is 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 a grind. Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to make a difference um, ultimately. But you never know. That the Premier League. How many times have we been in the situation thinking that a, a result is going to go a certain way? And the Premier League, which is why we love it, is that anyone can be anyone. Yeah. So like you know, you never know. You never. Know. I, I do think that. I think City will drop points. I I do think. I think Arsenal. I don't think Arsenal will lose. But I think they'll draw at some point as well. So we so just need to make sure. If we you need, do, then yeah, we've we got just got to win every game, man. I, I really do think we have to. I agree. Will we, do you think they'll win the weekend, Andy? Liverpool? Yeah. Uh, yes, I think we'll win 2-1. I was, I was thinking about this in terms of the oh, day. Mate. I know, it's, no, well, it's not going to be 3-0. It's not going to be 4-0, <laughs> is it? I was thinking about... Sorry, that how, sounds horrendously how stressful. My, how my Sunday night looks. And um, I think the only way I don't end up out is if both Liverpool and Arsenal win. <laughs> because you know any other combination is I'm just going to be either heartbroken or, or buzzing that we're going to the top of the leagues you, you, you're drinking it's just happy drinking or sad yeah, drinking yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. unless both win in which case that'll be great for working Monday yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> and these bosses are hoping for, for a comfortable Liverpool and Arsenal win then um, do you think they're going to win Liverpool are going to win the weekend Rick? I do think we'll win I think it'll be 3-1 uh, I, I don't think it will be an easy game I think we'll probably get a couple of late goals um, and it'll be like whew, that was that was that was a close game do you know what I mean I I don't it and it's hard at the moment to just envision them battling someone because they yeah. haven't looked like battling yeah. someone for a while so yeah. I think you're right listen I, I, I much prefer Ricky's outcome than Andy's <laughs> it feels listen both wins I mean, I'll take it every time but they do feel quite stressful but yeah it's that is this time of the season there's six more of these to go starting like I say at the weekend thanks to Andy thanks to Ricky for coming in you guys are the best thanks everyone for watching or listening to this episode of the match preview join us again on Sunday for the watch along of the game of course me and Errol in the studio from quarter to one with the uncensored match build up and then quarter to two with the watch along yeah it's uh, six more of these to go it's not getting any less stressful is it have a good weekend and I'll see you as well Thank you so very, very much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like. Uh, the season is now well underway. If you need extra Red Men content, be it podcasts, videos, documentaries, interviews, and general shows, fill your boots on redmenplus.com today.